What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Thought I'd give you guys kind of a weekly update. It's been madness here. We, uh, we've we been incredibly busy this past week, so I haven't gotten much filming done. Um, work comes first, uh, so this is kind of a secondary thing that we do. Um, so it's uh, a little bit tough to film sometimes, but thought I'd give you a small update on a few things and uh, a few shop car updates also. Um, Mike's car, getting the headers finished up. I had to take some time and weld um, another project. So I got one header complete. Um, still need to go from the collector out to the fender, but it's, uh, that one's ready to go. Just working on the next one. The, this passenger side's a little tighter, so it's a little bit tougher to get inside and weld like all of these back in here. So I had to break all of them off individually. So now I'm just reassembling them and then uh, welding them to the collector. So not a massive update on that. Um, on the S10, Mark got rear section done. Um, got our nine inch housing bolted up. Uh, got the axles in. Uh, TRZ anti roll bar. Um, had a little issue with the frame in the rear. Had to get some measurements from an old GM book to uh, get it not squared up, but make sure we weren't missing anything because we C notched the frame and then did the 417 Motorsports um, front location boxes. So, um, so kind of had to rework a little bit of the rear not huge but the support bar was kind of what we came to so got the uh, got Ken's car um, welded up just working on the back section um, just kind of do the two down bars in the rear he's not getting the full back half uh, it's fully welded it's welded onto the rockers so it's uh, it's pretty much ready got the floors cut the stock stock suspension floors or stock floors so it's pretty much ready to uh get welded in that'll be silicon bronze then um so on the shop car we got i know last time i we had a video the chassis was out of it um i got it welded over the weekend a little bit this week i finished it up last night just have a few more bars to do. Um, I didn't feel like tackling these back bars, so Mark's on on uh, last bar duty. <laughs> so um, hoping to get these two combined together as one in the next few days, so we can get it off of the chassis jig. Uh, tonight he's doing the bars. I'm working on cutting out. So we're cutting out up underneath the dash. There's no real reason to have it. Uh, just kind of taking up space, extra weight. That's the piece that just came out. I'm gonna throw it on the scale in a little bit once I get everything cut out that I want. But just gives it a little bit more room. Uh, gets a little tough with this seam in here um, because it's sandwiched here and on the back I'm gonna have to trim it probably leave a little bit of a lip so it's not doesn't let this flex too much um, yeah that's a kind of a, a week in review uh hopefully have a little bit more shop car update this weekend i'm gonna try to work on it probably be out here all day sunday or at least try to um and then i'll keep you updated on the rest of the customer cars it's been a crazy few weeks. We've been, like I said, incredibly busy. Um, I've been stuck to the phone for some days, um, other days taking orders. We just shipped out four cage kits um, in the past few days. There's two more over there right now, and then we have one more to cut. So it's uh, it's been wild. I don't really know where it's coming from we usually get you know they're pretty steady but 
just last week we got five orders in a week so it's a little bit of a wild time um kind of been going through some tubing shortages also as you can see our tubing rack is pretty bare so apparently there was a issue at the mill where they had to redo or they had to take some of the the tooling to another mill and had issues with that got that started up so i don't really know where it's coming from but we're trying our best to get through we have some different tubing coming from aed in indiana um it's like a 20 cent per foot increase so we're not going to pass it on to anyone but it just goes to show this is a crazy time right now um like any other motorsports part we're just having a hard time getting stuff um luckily we don't do a lot of part sales we don't do a ton of where we you know i don't know assemble a motor or something where it's just strictly parts and labor um we get a lot of raw materials so we can generally keep going pretty well but as of right now today we are out of inch and five eighths um and that's our main tubing that we use so just goes to show it's a crazy uh crazy time so uh i'll keep you guys updated and let you know on any progress done for the night unless mark's gonna you know get the car running or whatnot so sure. i uh cut out up underneath the dash as you guys saw uh, just get some more weight out of it clean it up a little bit um probably going to outline this cut it put some scallop strips uh put a carbon panel over there i think we're gonna mount the coils under here um probably up against the firewall have the um plug wires come through the firewall most likely it's kind of tough laying things out but um yeah so it's getting there until we can put the chassis back on there and uh 
get all of this cut out too. I won't really know where things are going to go, but Mark's over here finding all of my mist welds. This is a this is what happens every time we do a uh, every time we do a chassis. Yeah, it probably gets looked at a couple times a day as we're standing near it, and we always find, we always spots, find spots. No matter no how matter many what. times, it's always finding spots. So do the best we can. Um, I mean, it gets me, Mark, Gavin, and all of us looking at it. And as you can tell, I was out here last night, finished welding it, and you can tell with all the blue tape that I missed a few spots. So it's, uh, it's what happens when you're, uh, when you're just trying to get stuff done and weld it up. Um, but this is why we check it and all of them get checked um, before they go, like I said, multiple times. Um, there's just little cracks and crevices that get missed. Areas like this, they get, you know, deep down this, you can't see it when you're welding it. Um, or like this joint. Just different spots that get missed. But it'll get all welded up and uh, then we'll get it back in the car. Maybe... Not tomorrow, maybe Friday, maybe this weekend, and then we can start knocking out the front end stuff, get the rear end hung. Um, I don't know if I showed you guys, we got the four link housing done. Just need to weld the ends on, order axles, center section, brakes, all the fun stuff, all the expensive fun stuff. So. Yeah, that's a that's a complete one. It's a complete one. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I did miss quite a few though. Yeah, but it's the after hours welding. Over what a hundred joints or so? Yeah. Doing it at eight o'clock at night. <laughs> yeah, I think we calculated it. It was uh sixty pulses per joint. And I don't pulse much. I kind of just roll through it with light pulses to keep the heat down, try to keep the heat down. So maybe dabs of filler is a better way to put it, but it's a 60 per joint for inch and five eight. So there's probably three to 4,000 dabs of filler on a chassis. Uh, chassis like this, it takes if you're doing it straight, like an eight or 10 hour day, two, two and a half days to fully weld. Um, the longest part is finding all these little miss spots that Mark's going over right now. Those take a while to find and look over and then get a torch out, get your stick out huge and try and fit it in the tight spots. And yep. so. And then you go over it and you think you got them all. <laughs> yeah. And then you are doing something else and go, oh, look, there's six yeah. more spots. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's how it goes. That's the uh, chassis, chassis life, I guess. Um, oh, here's the, uh, here's the weight we cut out tonight. It's, uh, what was it? 10 pounds. That's 10 pounds just out of the dash and part of the back area, part of the uh, bumper support. Um, so with, we just put the car on the scales. Uh, it was, what was it, 2, 218? The car? The chassis. The chassis was 218. Yeah, 218, and then the car was 229, minus 10 pounds obviously now, so... Um, Getting really you know, close to that 400 mark. It'll probably be, I don't know, right at 200, 190, once we get the uh, front end stuff cut out. Because um, this is decent amount of weight. This will all be gone. This will get trimmed. Back to here, up under here will get trimmed. Won't have these back panels. These will get scalloped out. A little bit more frame to trim. But. So we're hoping for a sub 400 chassis. That would be, that'd be our goal. Kind of shooting for 2,500 pounds, 
just because we're not rich and we can't afford lightweight stuff. So we're gonna we're gonna do what we know how to do and use a cutoff wheel. Yep. <laughs> and make it light. Eventually we'll have nice stuff and whatnot, but semi on a budget. Um, but yeah, we're hoping for a light car. Just because we're not, like I said, we don't have a huge budget, so we don't have big motor money. We got a stock bottom end L33, 5.3. So if it could make 800 to 1,000 at, you know, 2,400 pounds, 2,500 pounds with me in it, that would be ideal. So keep you updated. All right, so we're getting ready to put the uh, shell on the chassis. Normally we do this, normally the chassis is on the jig when we put the body on, but we're gonna put it on jack stands because this is probably how most people put it on if they're in their garage. So I'm gonna give it a whirl. Uh, should be fine as long as we can get it wide enough past the, past the main hoop and the uh, dash bar. But done it a few times so won't be too big of a deal is one with the body now so just got a couple clecos like we had it holding the body on um, we'll go back later and weld that on and uh, then we'll really have a complete chassis <laughs> 